All right, can everyone see the screen? Yes. What y'all see? Uh, it seems to be uh, uh, sort of color of laptops. Can't hear you. It seems to be in the sort of color of laptops. The color of the laptop? Or, um... He's saying our sorted color of laptops is like a gold, black, gray, red disc. Mm, okay. Um, hold on. Let, let me see here. All right, what about now? Yeah, now it looks like a picture of uh, Black Sabbath 90 in a series. Yes, that is it. All right. <clears throat> is it Dr. Edward Robis, Robinson? And um, like I said, today's class is going to be on who's who on planet Earth. Um, Dr. Edward W. Robinson, or Robinson um, found out that blacks have nine DNA series. Nine DNA series. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means we got some things that we need to clear up on planet Earth with nine DNA series. So. Let's see what he said. He says that they tested the orangutan. All right. They found out that he only had three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla had four DNA series. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape. Right? And found that he had five DNA series. <clears throat> they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russian. And they found that they had six DNA series. Because they had tested 116 different human groups. Or in this case, mankind. All of them, all over the world, have six. They went over into Japan and China. And they only have six. All right. This is the map in which that he showed, in which they demonstrated that. All right. He said, then they tested the African people. And when they tested them, nine. Nine DNA series. So from below the Sub-Sahara Desert down to the foot of Africa, South Africa, all those ten nations of which African Americans descend from one of them, if not all of them, <laughs> we have nine DNA series which is the greatest possibility of genius. That's what this means. It also means that we are the furthest away from the so-called... Find HP. the country I'll be. Are they watch the Yes, they watch the age. So that means, once again, that we are the furthest away from the eight species. Once again... But apes did not come from us. We made apes. We made the monkey species 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, later on, as we began to start having mankind and adjusted the, um, the sexuality in which that there was able to be sexuality, be children by the various so-called races, then that is something in which that I explained too. But right now, once again, they tested the orangutan, had only three DNA series. They tested the gorilla, only had four DNA series. They tested the chimpanzee, had five DNA series. They went all over the world, all up into Europe, all right, um, into China, into Japan. They tested the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, etc. They all had six DNA series. Six. They tested 116 different groups. Mankind, humanity, human, whatever term that we want to use here, but this would be particularly mankind. Then when they went into Africa, all right, and being that we are descendants of Africans, as they say, nine DNA series, nine. And if you take a, um, if you take a test, a DNA test, you will find out the various tribes in which that you are connected to in Africa. Now, the haplo group in which that majority of the so-called Negroes in America are connected to is E1B1A. Okay? So this six and nine DNA series is exactly what Dr. York was explaining when he said not six ether and nine ether here. And it's based on conscious levels. The possibility of genius. Not just linear genius, but holistic genius. And to use the word genius, I'm talking about your genes. We also know that within the genes of an individual is the gen. But the human race, six ether versus nine ether, ether groups, burning gas, six ether, carbon base, European descent, can absorb energy from the sun, 10 to 13 years, um, lose on the thymus gland, moon, nonlinear calendar. All right? Six ether, carbon, high. African descent can absorb energy from the sun. Do not lose thymus gland. All right? So that is one of the clues on who's who on planet Earth. Feeling right underneath your throat chakra, right above your heart center. I will feel for your thymus gland. And if your thymus gland is still there, then that means that you are A God. And I talk about what we, and I'll get to what we're talking about here. So the sun, greater light, nine to the ninth, number of nine, 81. Children of the sun, lesser light, nine to the second power, 18. Of course, 18, um, or 81 flip backwards is 18, so forth and so on. So the greater light, the lesser light, symbolic to the sun and then the children of the sun, i.e. you. Now, this demonstrates the fact of having a sheep or woolly hair, all right, woolly hair, sheep, nine ether, this is what is shown to us, um, even spoken about in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, Jesus had woolly hair. All right. Um, however, through mass media, 
They have tricked us and thoroughly convinced us that this dogish ape-like hair is good and beautiful, which appeals to our laziness, which also has us convinced that it is more manageable. All right? Now, why do we say dogish ape-like hair is only because of the fact is that you look at six ether, which is the cousin to the sheep, is the goat. And that is the type of um, fur in which that is being demonstrated, um, as you see here to the right. All right? So um, the follicles of woolly or non-ether hair is flat and grows out to form a tight curl. Um, so what we're talking about is actually six ether to nine ether is talking about the power within your genealogy, within your genes. Because we just talked about six series DNA for mankind, all up into nine series DNA for what they refer to as humanity. But really, that would be that of the gods. And I'll continue on with what I'm talking about here. All right? Because I don't want to throw anybody off. I want everybody to understand what we're talking about. Um, Dr. York, he, he's gone into this information many times, but now it's being verified by DNA. So not just six ether here or seven, eight, nine ether here, but we're talking about now DNA. And we know that DNA spirals in an elliptical pattern just like your hair, just like hair. So this is talking about your genetics. The genealogy, right? So here, nine ether here, as you see here on the sister at the bottom right, that is your antennas to consciousness, all right? Your antennas to consciousness. Demonstrated through your DNA. This is where we get the word you study etymology of Ethiopia and ether. Ethiopia is Greek. Oku refers to vision. Detaining or black looking. Op, eye, face. Enathios, burnt, fiery looking, sunburnt. Right? Ether is Greek. Ed, surge, burn, crowd. Or natural force. All right? Natural force. Moving peacefully forward or unopposed. Aether. Upper air. Bright. Latin. Aether. English. Ether. Permeates all space between particles of matter with vibrations that constitute light and electromagnetic radiation. All right? So that's where really Ethiopia, the name Ethiopia comes from. All right? Now, that means we have more access to what is called or referred to as junk DNA. That's what this simply means. We have more access to our so-called junk DNA. Now, Barbara um, Masinat, in her book, Breakers of the Dawn, she states that the human DNA, the carrier of light, so your DNA is a carrier of light, or key, which is chi, or information, were once 12-stranded, 12-stranded. Now it is only a double helix strain. Well, that's for six series of DNA. It is time for you to move towards the challenge and unlock the history that is inside your body by allowing the light coded or light encoded filaments of redundant forming new helixes and by allowing yourself to be the recipient um, recipient to 
what the new information in the DA is going to, <coughs> excuse me, what this new information in the DNA is going to plug into you. These light encoded filaments exist as millions of fine threads like fibers inside of your cells, while counterpart light encoded filaments exist outside of your body, in your auric field. The light encoded filaments carries the language of the light ge geometry, which learns as the story of you are, of who you are, hence who's who on planet Earth. As the DNA begins to form new strands, these new strands will travel along a nervous system in the body that is being developed at the time, and memory and memories will come flooding into your consciousness. Remember then, your hair is your six, seven, eight, nine ether. Your hair, or from fur to hair, is, all right, is your consciousness, is your connection to consciousness. You must work to develop this nervous system to pull light into your body, pull light into your body. So this is why we teach Reiki, Pranic Healing, Qigong, Tai Chi. We teach you how to pull light into your body. And what elements do you need? What minerals and vitamins do you need in order to cleanse your melanin so that you can absorb more light? Number one, vitamin D3. Number two, iodine. Number three, vitamin B12. Number four, vitamin B6. Number five, vitamin B2. That's niacin. That helps to flush your skin of toxins and help the liver to rid the body of toxins and poisons that have come to the surface of the body. This is why sometimes you feel flush when you take niacin, vitamin B2. This is what is going on. Okay. Excuse me, niacin B3. Riboflavorin is also what you need, vitamin B2. I want to make sure I say that correctly. All right? So, we want to make sure that you get these minerals and vitamins on a daily basis because these are the things in which that helps. The melanin. All right. Um, eating bananas has high amounts of melanin. For those that have diabetes, then of course that would be burrow bananas, the smaller ones. They're not as sweet as Dr. Sabi states. So, why are we talking about this? Because get the book. Beyond Prophecies and Predictions. Get that book. If you can find it, you might not be able to find it. When I talk about books, all of a sudden they go up two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars. But this is the book you want. Mora. 
returns. More returns. Okay? Study the Journal of Biological Physics. It states that scientists have found that the stream, the stream of energy from stars travel in a specific direction, either up or down the galactic arm in which they are embedded. Stars are polarized to other stars, both negative, magnetic, and positive electric. Some receiving energy, some sending it out, all of which travels on a path of the magnetic field line. Recent findings reveal that we are downstream from Sirius in the part of the galactic arm our solar system resides in. New energies are flowing into Earth at an unprecedented degree. Sirius transmit its energy, highly charged photonic light particles, to our entire system via the magnetic field line, meaning we are literally receiving energy from Sirius. Now that makes sense because Sirius A, Sirius B travel around each other in an elliptical pattern, the same as the two strands or the double helix or the two strands of DNA, allegedly travels around each other in a mythical pattern. And in between are message codes, in particular four, A, C, T, G, in various combinations. Now, in the Holy Quran, chapter 53, Al-Najim, the star, it states, and that he, Allah, is the Lord of the star, or, excuse me, of Sirius, the mighty star. All right, so, um, anyone who study Mantak Chia, he shows sitting down the meditation techniques, but he have people open themselves up to the energies in which that comes down specifically from the Big Dipper. All right, well, I teach specifically how the energy, how we need to sit down and get the energy specifically from Sirius. That's what is going to strengthen our DNA. So the evolution of our species, the Homo sapiens sapien, is a quantum leap to an immortal species. Now, you are the closest to this immortal species because you have nine series of DNA. And we have originally 12. So that means you only have three more to go as compared to everyone else who has six. Has six more to go. Wonder why the state of the world is in. That is it. That it is. Wonder why the world is in the state that it is. Because the ones who has the highest DNA series are chilling and relaxing and allowing six ether beings to take care of them. Six DNA species to take care of them. Here it is. It is a quantum leap to an immortal species called Homo Christos. Homo Christos with 48 chromosomes that have 12 physical strands of DNA and 12 etheric strands of DNA. <clears throat> Our third dimensional biology is being alchemically shifted from carbon-12 matter into that of carbon-7, multidimensional silicon Crystal, hence Crystal City, six ether, one, um, six, excuse me, six new, um, electrons, one neutron, six protons. Its structure is retained. So all of our cells must be transformed from carbon to crystal so that we can withstand the tremendous amounts of light that will be streaming in other solar flares, super flares, mega flares into the planet from our sun 
which is acting as a magnifying glass for Sirius. Orion, the Taurus, the Pleiades, the Andromedas, and beyond now. No, highly charged energetic material is now being absorbed into the interplanetary area of our solar system, creating hybrid processes and exciting energy stated in all planets as well as the sun. Now, our crystalline light bodies would then convert the sunlight, ultraviolet light, directly into electricity. This is what will power us. We will require more light, less food. More light, less food. More light, less food. This is the same results in the sun gazing article in which that I spoke about before. All right? So, the science of melanin has its own DNA separate from our ancestors, parents, and homo sapien sapien DNA. The corona is a plasmic ray that is caused by the star's light. They want to lock everyone up in the house because of the Betelgeist star, which we talked about, which was Orion's shoulder, called the Red Giant. And, we put, and I was the first to reveal this information. Ten-hour video with Brother Panic. He's still talking about that even right now, and so is Brother Ani. So the biggest star in the solar system is about to implode as a supernova. Well, that's exactly what is going on. They are implementing artificial clouds at night so that we can't see it. Well, this is exactly what Bill Gates um, want to do, is to block out the natural light day and night. All right, day and night. So, go back and watch my um, videos that I did two years ago on the, on the subject when this whole thing was going down. March through September, I did like three different videos on the subject matter. So, when you understand DNA, well, you find out that Yah, as we refer to God as Rastafarian, Judaism, in other words, Jew, Black Jew, Jewish, converts, Ashkenazi, Sephardic, any of them. They have all this mystery concerning the name Yah or Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahweh. Well, when we did deep, deep analysis and study, we find out that Yah is your DNA. Yahweh, the four letters of the Tetragrammaton, is it equals DNA. So when you're talking about God or Yah, Yahweh, really what you call it upon is your DNA. This is why Yahweh is also Idolabroth. Because Idolabroth formed the physical body into existence. But it was the mother principle in which that breathed the life force into that body in order to make it a living, walking, talking instrument.
Yah is even in your hand for those who are God's. Your body is made up of the image, the symbol of Yahweh. Yod, fire, Ra, he, water, newt, va, air, tefnut, he, earth, geb. So you're made, of course, from earth, air, fire, and water. Yahweh, so-called man, the mind, in human form, the mind of God, in human form. Even within the 5% lesson, now this is Kabbalistic right here, but in the 5% lessons, it teaches about arm, leg, leg, arm, head, which is a law. The acronym, arm, leg, leg, arm, head. I don't think that's a coincidence. Or arm, leg, leg, arm, um, excuse me, or arm, leg, leg, arm, supreme head. Within Arabic, that's a lahi. Symbolizes man. The eye symbolizes the uh, the longer portion of the eye symbolizes the phallus. The dot symbolizes the sperm. Then you have a lahu. The u portion symbolizes the womb or the uterus of the woman. So a lahi and a lahu together becomes the alahuma or the Elohim, the Alpha and the Omega. Beginning and ending. Together, alone or alin, meaning the universe or or knowing. Even when you write in the name of a law. Translate it into the Greek. Number is 666. In the name of the law, 666, but is also is sex backwards. S-E-X. It's the same as S-I-X. Six. And it's talking about the physical, materialistic realm and how you bring beings to this planet it comes by way of sex hence your genealogy because you wouldn't have genealogy if it wasn't for sex that's how you and i got here our Life parents wouldn't exist right our parents have sex <laughs> so we formed Allah and Yah, those two principles. Everything is based on sex. The power of DNA. So right here, Arabic Allah, Aramic, Ayla. Hebrew, Elah, or Elo. So, ancient Egyptian, this is how it's, the same name is written. This is Ra, the dot in the center, 
This is a ton Ra. The mouth of Ra, Ru. So this is Ur Ra. Ur Ra. Or Ra Ur. Ra Ur. That's what this is. Ra Ur. So Allah, Ayla, Elo is Ra Ul. Ra Ul. R A U R. Or U R R A. Ur. Which means great light in the metro nature. Great light in the metro nature. Maverick says, um, in Gerald Massey's lectures, one of the titles of Ra is Ra Or, meaning, among other things, Ra, the Great One. The title Ur becomes Ul, which becomes the Hebrew El, in the Arabic Al. Ra'ur, or Ur-Ra, became Ullah, or in Allah. All right. Photonic energy symbolizes the highest self of the greater of the greater mysteries and ha eh or Tahuti, the moon god symbolizing the lower self or lesser mysteries. So once again Muslims spell and pronounce Allah as Allah. Therefore, Al Il equals Ra, the sun god, nature, light, photonic energy, symbolizing the higher self or greater mysteries. And Ah, Ah, or Tahudi, the moon, which is, these are his other names, Aha, the Iha, the moon god, nature, symbolizes the lower self or lesser Mysteries. Right? Even when you utilize the way or the script in which that writes the name Allah, Allah, the name turns sideways, becomes the own symbol. Right? The way in which that Allah is written becomes the own symbol of the Hindu Sanskrit teachings. It all symbolizes the Alpha and the Omega. Amun, Aminet, Nun. Nunet, Ku, Kuket, He, Huye. These eight names symbolizes the eight dividing cells of mitosis at the base of your spine. Hence the reason for the symbol of the Ankh. The Ankh symbolizes the bringing together of the principles of life and death into one symbol referred to as the Ankh, Alpha and Omega. All right. Yahibai. Yad is 10, Va is 5, I mean, He is 5, Va is 6, He is 5, 
comes to a numeral of 26. All right. If you break it down, Yod equals 10. Yah he 15. And Yah he va 21. When you add those numbers up in geometria, is a total of 46. Well, how many numbers do it take in order to form the physical body into existence? It takes 23 chromosomes from your mother, pair of chromosomes from your mother, and 23 pair of chromosomes from your father. Hence, 46. This is no coincidence. So once again, Yahi Bahe goes back to the physical body. Hence, DNA. So this is the reason why you want to study DNA. Because you're studying the real book of life. Not just the Bible portion, which does start out with the book of Genesis. Hence, your genes. The genes of Isis. Mitochondrial DNA. The whole Bible is talking about genetics. From the first book down into the book of, all the way through the whole book, the book of Revelations. Everything is based on DNA. The 33 generations from Adam to David, the 33 generations from David to Jesus, who is the root of David, 66. This is why the Bible has 66 books if you get the King James Version. Symbolizes the Bible as the book of life. The real book of life is that of your DNA. Once again, this is the importance of the research for DNA and finding out who you are. The scientists now have a good enough information in order to take you to where you need to go at or knowing who you are. Now, some very important aspects are not spoken about, but we can we can we can uh, correct all that. The letters Y H W H is being read backwards and substitute vowels to hide the mystery that is in the Egyptian supreme being, who he, the force of creative will, which becomes a Semitic language for he as in the male factor and he in the female factor. Of course, in English, he is a male. The letters are right here, or right there. I H U H. The Y in the Semitic language is replaced by an I and the U, um, which is actually a Y, and um, and the U uh, in the Semitic language is replaced with the W or V. So the name distorted becomes Yahweh, Java, Jehovah, Yahuwah, Yahweh. Sometimes it is also identified with Jao Adonai, the creator of the Hebrews, which is Ra Atan, or Atan Re. The angelic name Ariel, meaning the lion of the God in Hebrew, has also been used to reference to the Demiurge. And it is called his perfect name in some Gnostic lore. Ariel has been called in the ancient and original name for Adolabroth. 
You know, get the book, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World. We know that they talk about um, the comedic Temerian, whichever one that we want to utilize. But the architect of earth, of heaven, earth, and fashioner of the bodies of men is Ptah. That is another name for Ptah. We say Adonai or Aton Re, Adolabroth, Ja, or Ja. <laughs> Same thing over and over again. But even then, there's two aspects, the higher and the lower. <laughs> so when you study Ptah, says the architect of heaven and earth, the Master craftsman in, in working metal, sculpture, designer, and the fashion of the bodies of men. He was the blacksmith, sculpture, and mason with the gods. All right. This is Bata here to the right. He's the creator of the nature, of the physical world. He is the spirit that has descended into the trapped, into and trapped in matter. Okay? The new soul being born into matter would be the principle of Heru. Heru is the original fallen angel from heaven. Heru was the light in matter. A nickname for Heru, a bright or bringer of light, is matter. Was Lucifer or Uriel? Excuse me for the background. Or Uriel. Oriel, as we just seen. The bringer of light. Says ancient Africans would use play on words to express the reverse of an idea. Pata meant falling or spirit falling into matter and hotep. All right, which is Pata backwards or spirit leaving matter, the body, and go into a peaceful resting place. Today we use the term hotep as meaning peace, but hotep don't mean peace. The ancient Tamerians. Use the word shalom, S H A R M, shalom, which becomes the word shalom, salam, in Arabic and Hebrew. So, hotep did not mean peace. Rest in peace, maybe. Okay. All right, so. Let me come down here because a lot of stuff I got to skip. Just bear with me. All right, so who's on planet Earth? Well, not only can we tell who's who, remember the thymus gland? so-called Negro, so-called black, having thym the thymus gland shows that you are part of the godhood. And you have the, the, cor the carotid body is also an endocrine gland, right? So screen one or more uh on proesis, controlling hormones. We have the berry gland, which is also called the Lalana Chakra, or Beta Jajidi, 
This is a gland that was originally inside of the cavity of the hypocampus area of the brain. It was in the lower part of the cerebellum attached to the reptilian portion of the brain, which was connected to the appendix and the tonsils. The bed every gland controlled the four higher senses, telepathy, intuition, clairvoyance, psychemistry. In many melanated people, the veritary gland has been reinserted or reactivated via DNA in the submental area, which is located in the lower chin region near the neck. It helps with the activating of the psychic centers. So, if you have your veritary gland, which we can simply feel right up under your chin, it feels like a, two balls, one larger than the other one, And Dr. Bell speaks about this, and we have to bring this up because a lot of people on planet Earth that don't have these items, don't have these gifts, and we let them get away with a lot of things right here. The birthday gland is known in South India tantric orders as the Lana chakra, which lies between the fifth throat and the sixth third eye chakra. It is sometimes called the center of craft or Kala chakra. It has 12 or 64 petals, which has um, symbolic meaning that you can figure out on your own. In yoga circles, the Lana chakra is an important a little known chakra located in the soft palate behind the nasal sinus. In um, anatomical terms, it is known as the vermal nasal organ, or sometimes the Jacobson, the Jacobson organ, and is important in various Hindu practices. It is thought to be a a, um, a vestigial organ in humans, but is very, now check this out, but is very much more active in lower animals as a sensory organ that functions between taste and smell. It is important in reproduction and sexual behavior by monitoring pheromones and other sexual excretions. Okay, this, once again, this goes very back to DNA. There is medical evidence for a functional femoral um, um, nasal um, organ in fetal humans and some adults. The neural connections are still there, though even if the organ is not fully developed. All right. In other words, um, a lot of people don't have this organ. Is, or either is not fully developed. So if you do have it, then that means that you are one of the children of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. The hypothalamus of the brain governs the organ directly as well as automatically shifting the flow air in the nostrils from both sides to side in a regular Rhythm knows as the nasal um, patency cycle, <coughs> in which that we refer to as the alternating nostril breath technique of uh, Viloma, um, Loma Viloma. Right here, the Jacobson organ is the baritary gland. The Egyptian secret, or found on the web, the baritary gland is a reptilian organ. Jacobson organ and the sixth sense. Human extrasensory perception. Traditionally, humans have been taught to come equipped with five senses. Sight, hearing, tasting, touch, or smell. Animals process several sexual senses, including 
or to vision and hearing. Echolocation. Electric and or magnetic field detection and supplementary chemical detach senses. In addition to touch and sm taste, excuse me, taste and smell, vertebrates use the Jacobson or, um, organ, also termed the um, vermal nozzle organ and vermal nozzle pit to trace, to detect trace quantities of chemicals. All right. While snakes and other reptiles um, flick substance into the Jacobson organ with their tongues, several mammals exhibit the Feynman reaction, where Feynman, a animal, appears to sneer as it curls its upper lip to that it exposed the two um, vermosa, or vermos nozzle organs for, sensor, for chemical sensors. In mammals, Jacobson order, um, organ is used not simply to identify minute quantities of chemicals, but also for subtle communication between other members of the same species through its emissions and recept receptions of chemical signals called pheromones. Okay, so we see that this berry theory gland give you access to higher extra perceptions or higher senses, sensory and perception. So for taste, uh, for, well, let's go over the list. So for hearing, there would be clairvoyance. For um, sight, there would be clairvoyance. For um, touch, that would be sight chemistry. For taste, that would be clear sentience. For um, smell, clear guestance. So these would be the higher gifts in which that you would have developed from utilizing your Jacobson or, um, organ, which is your berry gland, which once again resides underneath the chin area now. So that means that um, that is co directly connected to um, right underneath your tongue where sometimes you geek, G-E-E-K, you geek, look that up. If you eat a fruit or something, you actually spit just like a reptile does, a snake does, venom. Or in this case, pheromones. So, if you have that gland, then we know who you are. You are a son and daughter of God. Now, Dr. Darrell, say it again. I can't hear you. Say it again. I don't see if I have a question. Yes. If you don't mind. So yes. if that um so if that has anything to do with connecting the governing and the conception channel when you uh let the the tongue touch you for your mouth? Yes. Okay. okay. This one in particular I'm getting ready to tell you right now. There's another gland in which that we have in which that um, not everyone has. So these two glands we have and others do not have, that's what, that's what separates the guides from men are these particular glands. Let me be clear about that. So you can love man all you want, and that's and there's nothing wrong with loving man. But however, if man does not have these particular glands, then there's something wrong. You're not from the lineage of the gods. 
And I'm going to show you the lineage of the guys and put all this information together because once you get into the DNA, you have to know what you're searching for. I came through various schools, so I had teachers who had some of this information. So it's time now to bring all this information together. And here it is, particularly, I'm going to now deal with Dr. Deborah Blair. Dr. Deborah Blair in his Man, Woman, and Child video, and he breaking down who's who on planet Earth himself. There is a gland at the top of the mouth. Now, you want to find those who actually have a hole in the center of this mound. The hole in the center of this mound gives you direct access to DMT, penoline, what is called chrism, C-H-R-I-S-M, chrism. Give you direct connection to chrism, which is produced from the, very, from the um, pineal gland and the pituitary gland, what is referred to as the land of milk and honey, the land of canon. Milk and honey. The milk is HGH, human growth hormone produced from the pituitary gland, and honey is the golden substance, DMT, which is produced normally the time in which that we are born and the time in which that we die in mass quantities. In between that, you have to learn how to make DMT flow. This is the reason for utilizing mushrooms. One of our new teachers, Halindi Ihi, Alay Salam upon him. He passed a couple of years ago, allegedly from COVID, which I doubt. But anyway, he said, if you want to see God, the mega milligram is 35. Of course, you can work yourself up to that. That's fine. And it's not something to get addicted to. Simply to explore your DNA, who you are, who's who on planet Earth. Have a friend. <laughs> One of my best friends, um, Dario's. He called me like once a week and fussed me out about, man, how many grams have you taken yet? <laughs> I haven't taken nowhere near anything in which that he is going towards. But that is one of the things in which that we did use as Hebrews. Israelites, you'll see the priest of the, of the Levite of the Leviticus priest wearing a mushroom cap. I'll get to that in a minute. But this gland here is known as the Epiphany gland. That's what was told to me by the ancestors. It's called the Palatine chakras. The palatine glands, this is at the roof of the mouth and it's like a mound. And in the sense of that mound is a hole. According to Western Dictionary, epiphany means an appearance or manifestation of a divine being. So this is a appearance or manifestation of a divine being. This is who you are. If you have this particular gland, you are a manifestation of a divine being. There is a switch point. Uh oh, this is where Brother Josh is asking me the question about. There's a switch point. Subtle nerve circuits 
in the hard palate behind the teeth, complete, that completes the circuit. Touching the area directly stimulates the penis as well as the pituitary gland. Pulling the tongue to the top as far back as possible stimulates the vagina as well as the pituitary gland. It's called the torus. Torus. Palatinos. The torus palatinos. In Shakti Tantra, this is called the Talu or Lalana Center. The Lalana Center. In Taoism, this area is called the Heavenly Pool. There's or actually three chakras here that allows the ascending chi of the spine or spinal region to reach the top of the head. The three chakras along the soft palate, the roof of the mouth, mediates the descending um, chi energy. Also in the center of this descending mound is a small hole that is linked to the third ventricle, which is overseen by the pineal gland that during certain periods creates a honey-like substance, chrism, that when swallowed, produces cellular regeneration. Okay? I got to tell you all this because this has been weighing heavy on me because now we got to separate the guys from the men. Just that simple. I need guys rolling with me for real. Not just saying that you're a guy. No longer. We can't, we can't play that shit no more. 5% turn. We can't, the, we, the, what you're saying, we can't, we can't play that black shit no more, Ali. <laughs> no. no. We can't play that black shit no more. Can't play any of this anymore. We got to damn get on our square with this information now. So right here, according to the man lecture by Dr. Deborah Blair, everyone does not have this gland. Certain melanated males, whom he called the sons of God, he stated that the so-called white people do not have this gland, and neither does the melanated woman, and if she do, he doesn't know whether it is a blessing or a curse. Well, I know women, or melanated women, who do have this gland. So if men have it, they call the son of God, sons of God, then they have it, then they call the daughters of God. All right. I personally have met several conscious melanated women who possess this gland, and they seem to be very psychically in tune. Therefore, melanated women with this gland obviously are the daughters of God. They are female angels. Now, if you have both glands, you are son and daughter of God. If you have one, or either all of these things, then you're a work in progress. We got you. Because <laughs> once again, this is DNA. And you can act, reactivate DNA. Let me show you how right quick, and I'll come back down. All right, right here, we have to look at it in epigenetics, because now this is when we get into epigenetics, because this helps to explain how to grow these particular glands. Right here, epigenetics, Bruce Lipton, the biology, the biology of belief, good book, y'all, you need to get that book promotes the idea that genes and DNA can be manipulated by a person's beliefs. By a person's beliefs. A Russian biophysicist by the name of Petor, or Petor, um, Georgia, 
or Java G. Research revealed that DNA can be reprogrammed by words and frequencies, opening up a whole new arena in medicine. So if you don't have um if you don't have your uh very very gland, then there's certain words in which that you can utilize in order to help manifest it. If you don't have your um um your epiphany gland, then certain words in which that you can cite in which that can become activated. I've spoken about these words before on other videos. I won't go so much into them here. So, opening a whole new arena in medicine, the experiment proved that one can use words and sentences to influence DNA. This explains how the body can be programmed by language, words, and thoughts, indicating that the human language are actually a reflection of our DNA. The scientist also proves the use of frequency can repair chromosome, chromosome damage by reprogramming DNA. And scientists have found that the genetic code follows the same rules of all our human languages. Now, this is Dr. Lynn Horowitz, once Harvard professor, graduate of Harvard. He says this, the primary function of DNA is electromagnetic reception and transmission. Less than 10% of DNA functions involve protein manufacture. More than 90 percent functions in the realm of bioacoustics. Bioacoustics means living words. Bioacoustics, living sound. 90%. So only 10% of your DNA is active. The other 90% is inactive, which is referred to as junk DNA, and you must use words. Bioacoustic and Bioelectric signaling. Bioelectric signaling. Light. So words, which is sound and light. You must use sound and light to reactivate the 90% of your DNA that is dormant. Sound and light. This is why I teach so heavily on these topics of sound and light. This is what will help activate the remaining 90%. <laughs> so it's good that you know the 10% of who you are as we break down through the genetic testing and so forth and so on in the various uh, genetic sites. But it's even greater. You can damn break down the 90% that junk DNA that functions in the realm of bioacoustic sound and bioelectrical signaling, light. Hence, once again, when we teach the cosmic power of sound, we teach Reiki, pranic healing, Qigong, Tai Chi. Sound and light. This is a true Hebrew Israelite. Not just talking about, oh, I got E1B1A. <laughs> like most Negroes do. Always happy about just the physical aspect, but there's more that you need to know.
Yeah, since we had, I might as well uh, explain. I might as well give up the juice on the science of it. So right here, get the book, The Human Body of Light and The Immortal Body of Light. Both of them written by Dr. Mitchell Gibson. A Mayfay who also has mentioned me in his lectures. So I do return to mention him in his and his very good books. Just like Santo Bonacci mentions me in his videos, I mention him in videos. Bobby, Phil, Azariah, all of them is mentioning in their videos. I mentioned them in various videos. There's a camaraderie for those in which that is sticking to the script and not just trying to get clicks. As Panic told me a few weeks ago, uh, shit, man, shit, we about, shit, we, we about the only ones that's left. He's right. That's real. And real, and still trying to get out real information. But here, the hidden reality of solar light. My investigations into the hidden nature of the human light body led to um, is led to a storage, an intricate aspect of our reality. This is a hidden aspect of the light of the sun. Mystical and spiritual traditions from nearly every culture has linked the sun to man's higher evolution. Cultures, as diverse in their scenes as they seem, the, um, the Omecs, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Buddhists, the Hindu, the Oceanic tribes, and Native Americans are all linked the power of the sun to man's higher nature. According to these ancient traditions, the hidden nature of sunlight holds an important key to higher human evolution. Well, how can you evolve if you're staying at the same level? You can't. So sound and light helps you to evolve, helps to awaken the junk DNA as it is referred to as in biology. In this chapter, I will summarize the major findings of these traditions as they relate to the hidden nature of the sun. Get the books if you want to follow. Here, prana. This is the prana mutra. I'm going to get this to you. As you're doing and bringing in light into the body, Hold your fingers as such. It awakens and increased self-confidence. This mutra shall be added to any other mutra or treated with the patience is short on confidence. It increases body vitality and provides substance when deprived of life support like food and water. It increases the light of the eyes. It releases the pupils of light uh, uh, the pupils of the eyes, when they get locked, all right, alternated with the upper mutra, this mutra makes the body pure. This mutra makes the body pure. So this is the mantra. Because I just can't leave you out there because people might not go and do the research. So I got to give you the information um, regardless. Om Hong Vajra Guru Pima City Hong. 
Om a hum vajra guru pima city hong. Om a hum vajra guru pima city hong. Om a hum vajra guru pima city hong. Om a hum vajra guru pima city hong. And you recite that mantra as you doing the mutra hand positions. All right. Walk to the next. I just showed you how to awaken your DNA with sound and light. Next. All right. So, as those energies come down at the top of the head, the pineal gland, the step down transform of electromagnetic energy go into the pituitary gland hypothalamus, thalamus gland, um, to the um, berytheric gland, well, first to the epiphany gland, then the berytheric gland, and then to the thyroid, parathyroid glands, to uh, the adrenal glands, the pancreas, spleen, the uterus, ovaries for the women, testes, and shrubble sac for the male, or testes and the prostate gland, specifically for the males. This is how this electromagnetic energy comes down into the body from the top of the head, hits your hair follicles down into the body. All right? Some more things in which that we must know. Reptilians have gills. Our people evolved from out of the waters. The waters were here before God. Back then, Leviathan ruled the water planet. We all come from her kingdom. To this day, we go through a reptilian evolution in her womb. We breathe liquid and we come equipped with gills. All right? This is normally where these gills are located at, on the side of the ears. Some people are born with an extra hole in their ear. Some have both, on both ears, most have one ear. And it's not all in the same location. Sometimes it's inside of the um, um, ear um, area. This tiny opening which sits right where the cartilage meets the face is a condition called the uh, right here, the preocular sinus that scientists believe may have be that may be an evolutionary remnants of gills. This is how you also, I'm giving you things in which that you can know who's who on planet Earth. We are the reptilians. In other words, we are the Anunnakians. Reptiles are green. Or reptilians are green. Here it is. Um, there are other um, pigmented birthmarks. Most common is called the among Mongoloid or Mongolian um, spot. These are very common in pigmented races. They uh, represent um, dermal uh, melanocytosis, uh, have no medical implication or phase by the age five through seven. So by the time that the child is seven, it's gone. But what this is, is actually the demonstration of the body at this young tender age coming out the womb, is able to manufacture magnesium. And it's on the back of the child because it symbolizes the most radiated area on the body, which is Kundalini. Blue, green, or gray pigmentation, lower back, sacrum, and buttocks disappear by 
age four of age, or as we said, five through seven. So at one time, the body was able to mass produce or produce in quantities magnesium. That's at birth. So by the time we get between four to seven, we lose that gift and then have to start taking supplements, magnesium supplements. Dark blue or purple bruises like um, muscular spots usually located over the sacrum usually presented in 90% of blacks and Asians and disappear by four years of um, age. They are the most common birthmarks. All right. Um, English sacrum was introduced as a technical term, and the word sacrum is from the word sacred in English, sacred. All right. So this is our sacred spot, which is right at the base of the spine. All right. So the only difference between plants with chlorophyll was magnesium at the center. You had that gift at birth. If you had this Mongolian, in, as they call it, Mongolian spot, you had magnesium. And then eventually, by the time you turned age four through seven, it became iron core. So as you see here, everything around this, uh, what they call plant chlorophyll or human blood hemoglobin, globin, the only difference is magnesium or either iron at the core, at the center. Get this book, The Greatest Story Never Told. All right? In the book, Greatest Story Never Told. She speaks on some things here. I can find the part. It has also been said, um, been claimed that our blood carries constitutions of the primal sea from our evolutionary past, which seems silly as blood has a great deal of elements, not in seawater, as the chloride in the um, salt, which our bodies cannot use. It is poisonous to us. Later, we still look into the reasons and how this is an excellent example of why very unhealthy bodies have allowed that to influence their outlook on life. Rather, blood appears more similar to clay, from which science is finally admitted that the ancient myths of co our cultures, of all cultures, may have been true after all. From a watery minimum does not have the radiation charge that clay has. It is known among naturopaths to be a very excellent healing agent, so its effects on cells is tremendous. Another element missing in Miller's um, exa um, experiment, blood is also thicker as the same goes because intracellular water exists in a semi-solid form. All right. Furrow hemoglobins were found to be the strongest paramagnetic. Paramagnetic with four unpaired electrons. This creates a positive electron spin, and the Earth is negative. The organism should be able to respond appropriately. However, O2 combines with the phenol, uh, phenol hemoglobins to form oxyphenol hemoglobin and iron and O2 become impaired and this creates a diamagnetic flow which is negative. If an organism such as we um, who have little 
light skin it to the extreme, or too much very dark skin, heme on it, the organism reacts irrationally to the environment. So we know blood can become magnetized. That's my point. In ex um, experiments of blood flow from fingertips to arms by using generators. Well, you can transform your body into a generator. This is the fact of studying these particular um, energy modalities that we talked about earlier. So, in his book, Explore Race, Origin of the Next 50 Years, there are also some races on this planet that you cannot get along without. Because just by being, just by their very being, they hold an energy that maintains life here. I refer, um, I refer before to the dark-skinned people who all hail from Sirius. Once again, I refer to all dark-skinned people who all hail from Sirius. Sirius is the place where the prototype female human being was created. Sirius as a galaxy system is also strongly feminine. And, well, yeah, Sirius A particularly because that is all set. All right, and then the, that's the um, nose of the dog star, which symbolizes uh, Ampul or Anubis. All right. And is the source, right, which, which is the companion to the man in, upstairs, man in the sky, which is Tomato Ryan. The source of mother energy that you all, that you all often attribute either to religious figures or to the mother earth. But in fact, the real source of that feminine mother energy is serious. The dark-skinned people are all rooted from Sirius. If anything happened to them in a way where they don't feel welcome here, the mumbling will begin appearing amongst them as well. So I know that you all been uh, worried about how society is going, what is going on, and you know, should we be happy about these changes taking places? Of course, majority of us are not and will not be. But right here, he just explained it. He says, if anything happens to them in a way where they don't feel welcome here, the mumbling, the, the mumbling, all right, will begin amongst them as well. And I'm not talking about conversation. I'm talking about an energy connection to the subconscious. The subconscious is united with both the conscious and the physical. So only the dumbasses who don't have this connection go and get this jab. And that's what has happened. Those who have this connection don't run out and get it. We didn't fall for the tricks of the devil. The subconscious is united by both the conscious and the physical. So it is, um, it is sometimes that is felt and only sometimes understood. If the murmuring shall begin in the dark skin of races, all people on planet Earth will be in trouble. Once again, this is why they try so hard to keep you deaf, dumb, and blind. Because this shit is about you. And this man right here is the one who's saying it. Appear to be white. You appear to be white. You appear to have blue eyes. But he's the one who's telling you this. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was watching a program called Slider. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the episodes, they uh, had a thing about hybrids. You know, they were going to turn the whole uh, crew into hybrids. But the brothers, the only melanated uh, 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 person in that in that crew. Mm -hmm. so the scientists say, "Well, 
And he looked at the brother. He said, well, oh, y'all, I'm going to turn y'all on to hype. Well, you, he looked at the brother. He said that, uh, uh, well, the kind of DNA you got, I can't do it. You know, did he or did he not drop drop something in that, in that episode? Yeah, but what I've just been talking about today, everything I just talked about <laughs> in the episode. And he said sliders. I can't do it. He said sliders. I ain't seen sliders in years, brother. For him. What channel that's coming on nowadays? It's on uh, a channel called Comet. Mm. Comet on channel 200. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. I said, I, I said, yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that he stopped it in that episode. Yeah, yeah, that used to be one of my favorite um, TV shows back in the days when I was a kid. <laughs> they mm-hmm. dropped it, man. So now I can go back and look at it and analyze it at a whole different level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, <laughs> oh, man. He said, so, he said, due to your DNA, your, your DNA, I can't, I can't, no, I, I can't do that. Right, because we got nine series DNA. They only got six. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't racism. Yeah. This is genetics. This is DNA. So we're trying to find, who, once again, who's on planet Earth, because I want to work with the gods, the true gods. Mm-hmm. All right. Not Negroes, but not, not, not blacks. Negroes and colors posing right. as God. <laughs> That's right. So now I'm giving you the traits, the DNA traits of those who are the gods and goddesses, and how you can pick them out yourself. Number one, got to have a thymus gland. Two. The berry gland. Three, the epiphany gland. Four, gills. All right? Now, you ain't got to have all of them, but you got to have goddamn an assortment or something. You got to show potential. <laughs> Once again, I, got, I know personally I got to know who's who. Therefore, if you are consciously or unconsciously or even unintentionally unwelcoming dark-skinned people, then add dark-skinned people to your thank yous. For you can um, say people from a given country, but I recommend just saying dark-skinned people because dark-skinned people live all over the world. In this way, you will not exclude any. Perhaps when you go, when, um, when you get done thinking the different animal species you choose to think, or even before that, if you choose to go in that order, fill yourself with the feeling of welcome and genuinely say with the meaning and the intent of welcome. Welcome to Earth, Dark Skin People. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. Um, might be an option at the end. I'm not trying to create a hierarchy among races, but I am, but it is important to acknowledge and appreciate and respect those you cannot live without. So the question is, what would happen if there were no so-called black people on planet Earth? This is what he's telling you. No one can live upon planet Earth without us. We, you all know that you cannot live without Mother Earth. If something happens to her, you could, you would be, well, elsewhere. But you do not often consider that you would also be elsewhere if something happened to some human beings on Earth. He told you who those human beings were, i.e., dark-skinned people. Now. If you don't understand what he mean by dark skinned people, let's go to his book, Explore Race. He said, I'm presenting the origin of the dark skinned people on earth because they are so unique to the finding of your culture here. They are really functioning as living, walking, talking connections between this planet and Sirius, and to a lesser degree, to Orion. This is why this so called um, supernova. 
explosion of the star Beetle Guys is so important. If anything ever happened and they decide to return to Sirius and Orion, and of course we have the capacity to do so, simply by transforming our our, our bodies into um, macabres, and have the capacity to do so. See, see, he tells you, and have the capacity to do so over a period of about eight thousand years, ten thousand minimum, or maximum, excuse me, but probably seventy-five. 100 to 8,000 years, the energy coming from Sirius and Orion will gradually hold. Because it takes a while for energy to travel here. It would take about 75 to 50 to 8,000 years for it to cease after they left. That energy is what allows you to function and to be alive here on the planet borrowed from Sirius, which is why it looks so different from the rest of the planets in the solar system. In short, to exit not only in this solar system, but in this galaxy. Since some people was, wasn't decided on what dark skin made, he tells you. To put no fine point on it, the dark skin African people are what's keeping you alive here. Their origin is so rooted in extraterrestrial culture that the ability for civilization to exist at all on the surface directly related to them. The other races who started out their cultures on the surface, such as the Palladians and the um, um, Polynesians, Polynesians are rooted race of the white race, would not be able to maintain the planet's energy and keep you here intact. So nobody else could do this. All right? Nobody else could do this. So we really are the guardians of the universe and the guardians of this planet. So those with E1B1A, haplogroup, DNA holds this planet together. Hell, and the word more According to Asa G. Hilliard in his book, The Oldest Book in the World, means the guardians. So, the particular beings who are the Syrian beings, or the Syrian reptilian beings, are those who have E1B1A, haplogroup. This is who we are also looking for. So, if you have E1B1A, haplogroup, you have these particular traits that we're talking about. It's like Uncle Sam back in the days, we want you. You remember that um, poster? Some of you, most, most of you probably don't remember that. That was back in the um, 60s and 70s when they was um, promoting the Vietnam War. But look that shit up. So those with E1B1A haplogroup, is who we're looking for. We need you. <laughs> These are the gods of the planet. These are the gods of planet Earth. This is who's who on planet Earth that we want to deal with. Like ourselves. I'm putting out the call. Because right now, Bill Gates thinks he can win this shit and his cronies. The origin, then, of the dark-skinned people is so rooted in this planet that they truly represent the energy in walking and talking form of the connections with Sirius and Orion. Over the years, the Earth humans will rely on the visitors to do things. Sometimes, for example, there might be an area that was becoming a desert where no people were around, the extraterrestrials were land, intact the, uh, the under, ta um, interact with the underground spring water, bring it to the surface, and create a lake. Stopping the, desert, the desertism. 
The animals will come and the trees will grow. The cycle of nature will begin. People will be nurtured and so on. All right. The animals will come, so they would do things like that. So over the years, there's been a lot of energy going back and forth, but they couldn't have happened if it um, hadn't had the dark skin people. They are the prototype human beings. In other words, we are the oldest people on the planet Earth. Now, I don't want that to go to your heads, dark skin people, but we are. And um, another class I'm going to go into demonstrating on how the various races get on planet Earth. All right? But right now, it says, when Earth ascended, the etheric Syrians will take over as guardians of this planet. This is now the time. This is now the place. But this is why I'm setting out who's who on planet Earth. Because I'm looking for the guardians. The real guardians, not that movie shit. <laughs> they show you one is green. They show you one that is blue on that guardian shit, remember? Majority of Ethereum Syrians are found among the so-called black, brown, red, melanated races of Earth. All right, this is, this is what has been told to us. All right, so over and over again, we have demonstrated that this is who we are. The text confirmed that the elder gods, or Anunnaki's, were in fact not the first gods, right, because the Anunnakians were the Syrian Anunnakians who came later on. But the first beings who came and formed life on planet Earth were the Syrian beings. So the Anunnakians are a part of us, but they're not the oldest of our DNA. It goes back to Sirius, as um, everything in which I've read thus far have stated. And in fact, not the first gods, and that a race or races known as the ancient ones predated the arrival of the elder gods. The ancient ones as the Empress speaks of, are the Syrian beings. The ancient ones have come from the stars many eons earlier and have established an extremely advanced culture. The Anunnaki's, although initially accepted and very um, technologically advanced themselves, subsequently caused immense problems and a war broke out. It seems this was not small battle. Indeed, it changed the entire face of the earth and irrevocably altered the course of life thereon. The text goes on to say that the, um, that the elder gods or the ancient or the um, Anunnakians produced and created man. It was called the Luluwa. Of course, you can read all of this information in all the Zechariah Ascension books. The 12th planet, the stairway to heaven, the war of gods and men, the lost realm, when time began, Genesis revisited divine encounters and Zechariah ascensions the cosmic code. Like I said, I won't get into the making of man, but Another trait that we want A B origins. All right? Man apes twenty eight separate studies show that chimpanzees have the blood type A and minimal O, but never B. Yes? 
eight separate studies shows that the gorillas have the blood type B in minimum O, but never A. There are no blood type AB in either of the man apes. Now, why do they keep saying man apes? I'll get to that information later on because it do have some relevance. All right? So AB is the only blood type not found among gorillas. AB positive is the ultimate recipient. It can generate life from all blood types. However, no one can receive A positive blood and live. Within the plasma of the AB positive blood type is a gift called liquid gold, which everyone can receive. It is used to fight off infections. AB positive is the blood type found on the Shroud of Turin, all right? And the Sodorum or the, um, or the Sodorum face cloth, it is the blood type of Jesus Christ. This is at least what we've been told. So that might be another element that we have to add to it about the blood types, all right? Because there's a lot of things going on. All right, so. Now, let's get back to who's on planet Earth. Continue on here. All right, this is a human hand. This hand looks basically like yours, if you look at it. Right? Humans, gods, and humans have this hand. <laughs> this similar hand here. All right, in Arabic, eight is written as the upside down V, and one is written as one. Thus, on your left hand, the marks appear as upside down V and one, which can be I'm written as 81 in English. On the right hand, the marks appear as 18, which can be written as 18. As we showed you earlier about 81 and 18, how they reverse, but here it is. Interesting part is that if you put 81 and 18 together, it comes to 99, which is the number of Allah's beautiful name that appears in the Quran. And also, if you subtract 18 from 81, it becomes 63. All right. Allegedly, at the age of 63, Prophet Muhammad passed away, and the religion of Islam was completed. All right. I don't care so much about that one, but the 99 names of Allah definitely um, was filling. So here, comparison of primate hands. All right. You got the tosir, you got a gibbon, a chimpanzee, a woman, and a homo sapiens. All right. I showed you a homo sapien hand earlier. This is a normal palm crease, which is the same within the homo sapien hand, which is man, God's hand. But then you got the, the simian crease. What is a simian? A simian is an ape. So, let's look at this. There's a God hand to the left, to the right, that's a simian line, a simian line. Um, um, on the hand, straight across. That's an ape. Look, that's an ape hand. People on Earth that has this ape hand, not genetically mixed with. They have about four to eight, if not more, DNA of Neanderthals. All right. Tomorrow, we love him in pictures, but he has a simian hand. All right? And he loves black women. <laughs> Ronald Reagan, Mitt Romney, Ethan Hawkins. Is Charles Einstein the right? 
Hillary Clinton. And Margaret. They all have a Simeon hand. In which that this is why they refer to themselves as Semites. We talking about Shemites, not Semites. Semites is the people in which that they claim who uh, includes particularly the Jews and the Arabs. But really, as you see here, Simeon, semen, pertaining to monkey and ape. Primates, semi-circle, semi-formal, you all heard that before. So that means part Neanderthal, part human. How are the words Neanderthal and Simeon related? Neanderthal and Simeon are synonymous, as they have mutual synonyms. Neanderthals with dim stoop, Simeon looks like ape monkeys. The University of California. So you have some who have more Neanderthal. But right here, once again, Elijah Muhammad cleared it up long before there ever was a Caucasian or white race on the planet Earth. You and I and our fathers were not just thousands of years, not just hundreds of thousands of years, not just millions of years, not just billions of years, but trillions of years ago, according to the word Almighty God Allah, to me, that we and our fathers were here. There is no birth record, meaning that there is no beginning record of the black people. They have been here forever and forever they have. We do not know nothing about their beginning. There is no prophecy of any ending of them. This is known. The world knows it. Um, that, that is just the truth of the matter. I mean, for real. So understand what I'm getting ready to tell you right now. This is the ways of the gods. All right? First, we write the future. That's what you read in the book of Revelation. They let it happen. Then we let it happen. Then there's a rebirth of one who explains it. Or ones, as I like to say. Explains it, then the execution of judgment takes place. All right, this is what takes place. You can go back and um, read. Um, you can go back and read. Um, no, go back and actually look at um, Sambo. All right. Um, after I get the title for you, uh, let's see here. It's on YouTube. Yeah, there's a video I actually watched back in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was old then, it appeared to be. Um, the Sambo Gods. All right, let me um, get it once again. The name of it particularly. Yep, Sambo, the black gods and Africans in Asia. those particular videos very important all right so Matthew 24 22 if those days 
had not been cut short, nobody would be saved. So God damn it, we waiting for them days to be cut short. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. All right, so there's, there's some elect upon this planet that, shit, right, shit, I know I'm damn ready for it. But anyway, for those shall arise false Christ, crisis, and false prophets, who's only in for a prophet, and shall show great signs and wonder, so that if it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So if it was possible for them to deceive us, you know, then hell, all of us be lined up for that goddamn shot. Mark thirteen twenty two, for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders that would um, deceive even the elect, if that was possible. Luke eighteen seven, will not God bring about justice for His elect who cry out to Him day and night? Will He continue to defer? Their help. Second Peter two, um, second um, chapter first through third um third verse. But these, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. All right. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, the coming of the lawless one will be accommodated by the working of Satan, which even uh, with every kind of power, sign, and false wonder. All right? Right now, that motherfucker is Bill Gates, lawless one. They don't care about the law. They don't care about none of that shit. 1 John 2, um, 18, children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have appeared. This is how we know it's the last hour. So how do we know who's going to be pushing that, that bullshit? Well, right here, strong concordance, or pharmacia, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. <laughs> Come down. Usage, magic, sorcery, enchantment. Definition, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. That's what the word pharmamachia, all right, pharmamachia, or pharmiachia, which means, which is same for pharmacopoeia, pharmacopoeia, all right? That's what this is. So the pharmacy is part of the Antichrist system. You see it right here, strong concordance. From a key, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. The spell is the TV, the drug that they push in, <laughs> is the COVID vaccination. That's the medicine. For those who fall under the magic, sorcery, and enchantment. Englishmen, concordance. What does it say? Idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, witchcraft. Revelations. By your sorcery, by the sorcerers, by the sorcery. But hold up, we find that once again that pharmacopoeia, or what is also pharmacia, properly drug related sorcery. Like the practice of magical arts, etc. Once again, so you fall in the pharmacy, we get this NIH in front of you, ahead of the NIH. You don't know who that is, Dr. Fauci. Oh, Dr. Foul Chi, he's foul. Very foul. But it says what? From a Is he actually a doctor? Huh? Dr. Fauci is not a doctor. It, that's what they say. Dr. Fauci. 
So he, <laughs> from a kid, oh, says medicine, uh, medication, pharmacy. So if you didn't know what from a make um from a kiss means from Latin into English, it tells you pharmacy. Who pushing the vaccines? The pharmaceutical industry, isn't it not? And who's over that push? Bill Gates, Fauci, and different other ones. And they're using jackasses like Sleepy Joe and others to push their agenda. But this is witchcraft. This is real sorcery and witchcraft. Or you making lighting candles and saying your prayers and stuff like that. That ain't witchcraft. That's simply activating your subconscious mind in order to deal with the things that's happening on planet Earth. Real sorcery is TV. Tell lies to your vision. Real sorcery is being able to push an agenda that you almost have no fucking control over and no hope of surviving. Unless... <laughs> what we just finished saying? Unless... Some shit comes in order to help stop this from happening. Will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he continue to defer their help? God damn. Okay. So, right here. William Henry Gates. William Henry Gates. Bill Gates. His name come up to 201. Then you put in COVID-19 plague. It comes up in Geometria 201. No coincidence. That's the mark of the beast that we're fighting against. And, of course, I'm pretty sure he has one of these simian hands. <laughs> Goddamn Neanderthal. All right, let's continue to find out who you are. Negro. Negroes, a person of the typical African branch race, formerly called the Ethiopian, inhabiting the Sudan of any of the black race of Africa, including besides proper Bantu, Pygmy, Hottentot, and Bushmen. Right, well, according to from South Africa who would be related to the Bushmen and the Hottentots as well as the Bantu people. He says that a Bantu simply means the children or the people of Antu. In the event, Africans came to be known as Bantu, meaning Antu's people. Cultural historians actually attest to the fact that the ancient Africans revered a goddess more than they did a god. Now, Kriya goes on to explain the links to the connection of the Sumerian civilization. The links in the Sumerian civilization in southern Africa simply cannot be ignored or erased. They can be traced with etymology in the names and the origin of the indigenous people. The more obvious evidence of the mysterious origin of the words Abantu, the name commonly used to describe South, um, black South Africans. According to Creed Mutois, the name was derived from the Sumerian goddess Antu. Abantu simply means the children or the people of Antu. Now, you go and do your research on who's the Antu, um, who's Antu in Sumerian traditions. You will see that that is the wife of An Anu. That's the wife of Anu. All right. Matriarchal structures of Central African Bantu peoples are very ancient, going back to early Neolithic, um, Lithic times, and as seems to be have been. Substantiated by the research of J. 
Jerome Lewis and others about the rainforest pygmy people in Africa and Asia. It would perhaps even have had its roots in the culture from very early Paleolithic times. All right. Eastern Central Bantu inhibits inhabits a huge region extending across the continent from Congo Delta in the west of the lake um, in Yasa in the east, including present day Congo, Angola, Zambia, Tanzania, and Malawi. An enormous area inhibiting by people whom um, ethnologists have called the matrilineal, such as the Yombi, Songo, Shango, or Congo, Odang Odango, or Kavango, Mubandu in Angola, the Bimba, um, the Lua Pula, the Bissa, and the Lima or Lamba, the Lili, and the Keo, the Keodi, Ila, Tonga, and others in Zambia, and the uh, Inyanga, or Inyanja, and Yao, and Siwa in Malawi. Now, I'll tell you who some of them are. Now, we find out the Bantu people are the people of of the female goddess of the wife of An Anu. Now who are the Anu people? Well, the Anu people or the Amu or the Anu people are also called um, the Twa people, also referred to the Taank or the Tasetian people. All right? These are the um, pygmies that they refer to as. Right? These are the and new people, okay, who according to signs and symbol of primordial man are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. Okay, so these two people, groups of people, the Bantu people and the Anu people, who are they? They are the Anunnaki. All right, creation of humans. All right, here it is. Sumerian writing speaks of the day when heaven and earth was created. The writings talk about the Anuna gods. These were the Anuna gods and being born and the lesser Anuna beings charged with the work of shape, the land, canals, and building structures. The greater Anuna ruled over the lesser. All right? The lesser Anua, Anuna, right now, these Anuna, this is the Bantu people. So the Bantu people, or the haplogroup for the Bantu people, is E1B1A, which the Hebrew Israelites claim. But these are the Anunnakians. So you have E1B1A, haplogroup, you are an Anunnakian, an Anuna being. See, we're going to cut through all of the nonsense. I'm showing you who's who on planet Earth. In fact, this is probably what the name of this video is going to be, who's who on planet Earth. All right? So the lesser Anuna became resentful of their Anuna superiors and demanded Inki, the great ruling Anuna guy, to create others to do this work. The Anuna awakened Inki from his subterranean underwater habitat, habitat. He was in what could be described today as a state of suspend, suspended animation. Inky and his wife, Nima, 
created humans to be slaves of the Anunna. The humans were to take the place of the lesser Anunna, who was tired of bearing the burden of hard labor. Gold must have been a viable element to the Anunna, and this um, variation um, was passed to us and still exists today. Well, not to those who have e one b one a we are still the Anunna people, the Bantu people, the gods of this planet. But yes, for those who do not have E1B1A, have low um, type group, the burden was passed on to them. And this is the reason why they're trying to probably kill off the E1B1A bloodline or haplogroup DNA line, I should say, bloodline. All right? So here it is, Hebrew Israelite DNA haplogroup, haplogroup E1B1A. This haplogroup is found predominantly among Banta or Bantu Negro. Descended to include, but not limited to, the African Lingua, many West African tribes, the Igbo Jews, the Yoruba Jews, African Americans, West Indian, Brazilian, Haitian, and other Negro influenced races throughout the Caribbean and scattered across all different nations. Contrary to false DNA reports, this is not a Sub Saharan or Hermetic. Um, haplogroup. It is a Semitic. It is Shemitic. S H E M I T I C in origin. All right. Negroes have been identified as being exempt from the bloodline of Ham per the Zandafan Compact Bible Dictionary. This haplogroup represents the Y DNA of Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is what the Hebrew Israelites believe and state. Well, we gave you the highest portion of it is talking about the Bantu people who are the children of Antu, who are also the children of Anu, who are called the Anuna or who is known as the Anunnakians. And those who have the E1B1A, you are a child of the Anunnakians. You are a son and daughter of God. You are the gods in which that is spoken of in Psalms 82. You are the gods that is spoken of in John 1033, 1034. Excuse me. You are the gods in which that the Bible refers to y'all as or to us as. So this is the reason why DNA is important because, once again, who's who on planet Earth? Amazingly, it was one of the first books I read in which that actually woke me up to consciousness um, further um, to who's who on planet Earth. That came by Dr. Malachi of York, who was known as Imam Isa al-Hati al-Hamati at that time over the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, the Ansar al uh, community. Back in 88, I took that book. Um, I got that book from one of the brothers in the train stations in 88 and read it over the um, so-called holidays. Came back, next thing I knew, everybody else also was reading Dr. Yoke's books, Imam Misu's books at that time, and we all began to start wearing jellabias and kufis and so forth and so on. And became new in Islamic Hebrews. So, as I've also said, and that was in 1988, going to 89, my second semester in college. And even more exciting was the fact is, is that um, he just did not wake up myself, but hundreds and thousands of us. I can't tell you what happened in the bedroom. I can't tell you what you know, went on, but I know when I met him, 
Um, I was getting ready to, well, I was on the land in 94 and with my girlfriend at the time, Beverly, um, and with our friends, um, Dion, all right, and Shannon, and they was going together at the time, and so we decided to take a trip on down to the land. Dion comes running back to me, said, man, I shoot Dr. York's hand. He said, I never washed his hand again. <laughs> I said, for real? I said, okay, where are guys? <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and so I said, okay. Next thing I know, I, I asked him, I said, well, what Dr. York? He said, oh, man, I was always down in there to fence, um, you know, and everything. And, you know, he was coming out and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, well, he's coming out. So he getting ready to make his little rounds. Next thing I know, he come walking up right. He stops right at me. Now, right before he stopped, the spirit told me, he said, change your aura to white. So I changed my aura to white. Next thing I know, he stops right in front of me, you know, and start talking, having a conversation. How you doing? I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm like, damn, you know, spirit, damn, you know, made this thing possible all quick and fast. Because <clears throat> I didn't even realize necessarily it was him until I started hearing the people say, oh, doc, no, that's Dr. York, that's Dr. York. You know, blah, 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 Raboni or, you know, whatever names that they he was going by at the time. All right. But I know that he did something in which that I never had the pleasure of seeing, which was to change the consciousness of man on planet Earth by the hundreds and thousands, all right? I know brothers who did their thing through the videos, such as myself, you know, might have changed hundreds, maybe a few thousands, minds, but never had that great of that impact that Dr. York had. Because, see, he had the books. And a lot of the information that he used, I would say 90% of the information was accurate. 10% of it, you can throw that shit in the trash can. You know, but the 90% in which that I've seen, and I did my research studying, because he said, if you don't believe me, go and check it out. And when I would go and check it out, I said, okay, well, yeah, this shit right here is real. Okay, it's true. I can see that. Now, verification of the alien stuff, I couldn't verify that. You know, I believed in UFOs, because I've seen UFOs ever since I was nine years old. But to see the beings come off the UFOs and blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? I can't say, oh, they look the green men. Oh, they look like um, this and that. Oh, they look reptilian. Oh, they look that. Couldn't verify that. You know what I'm saying? Hard to verify. So, you know, you always research. You just keep it in the back of your mind. Be a skeptic. And then when you find a connection for it, then you bring it to the limelight. That's what I do. That's how, you know, my information be so accurate. You know, it's because I bring it later to the limelight. I keep it in mind, and I wait for clues to be found. You know, this shit is like a puzzle. You know? You find clues, puzzle pieces, and you put it together. And you want the best puzzle piece in thing there. <laughs> okay? So um, that's, that's how we want that. All right, so um, continuing on here. So allegedly, you have Abraham. He had children by Hagar. He had children by Sarah. He has um, children by Katara. All right. The E1B1A, according to what is being said, came by way of Isaac. All right, and Jacob and his 12 sons of Israel through David and then Jesus Christ. All right. You have E1B1B, which is the Edomites, who is also the brother of Jacob, 
You know, of course you read your Bible, you find all that all that shit out. You know, but here we have African Americans, mostly Evo, band two. This is the one from the E1B1A or E dash M2 Shem's bloodline. All right. Now understand that everything that he's talking about biblically is really talking about the bloodline of the gods. But we're using the Bible in order to verify these connections. All right? Because the Bible is still relevant. You never throw the baby out of the bath water. You just continue researching. So um, I explained this information on um, the metaphysical ending of religious confusion. But here is E1B1A, African Americans, mostly Igbo, Bantu, Bamelika, Bamelik, uh, Balan, Balanta, um, Bijagad, Iwa, Fanti, Fula, as in Fulani, Ga, of course, Igbo, um, Limba, Mandinka. Right, these are the ones who have this. All right, Ovambo, Tusi, Yoruba, West Indian High, Brazilian High, Puerto Rican High, Haitian High. They have high amounts of E1B1A scattered amongst other groups and throughout the world. All right, the Lemba people are the tribe of Levi. All right, so the group and subgroups of E1B1B is e m 35, which is Ham's bloodline, the Algerians, um, the Amharas, Ethiopians, the Berbers, Moroccans, the Bija, um, the Dago, uh, Ethiopians, Oromo, um, Waleta, uh, um, Ethiopian Jews, um, Egyptians. Fur. Now, all of them don't fall under that category, though. The, um, the Libyans. The Maasai tribe, the Mosabet, uh, the, the Somalians, and the Sahariwis. All right? So, like I said, all of them don't fall in all of that, but this is the way in which that is normally broken down. All right? Because I'm going to show you in a second, Jacob. All 12 tribes of Israel are Negroes, plus Leah, Bilhah, Zilpah, and Rachel. And they have, of course, Reuben, Simeon, or Simon, Levi, Judas, Issachar, um, Zebulun, Dan, uh, um, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, and Benjamin. All right? The 12 tribes of Israel represents the subgroups of E1B1A, Negroes and their seeds worldwide. Now, all right, so let me um, destroy some of this information which that has been out. The ethnic Class, um, classification of the Israelites is Negro. The Y-DNA, bless you, bless you. The Y-DNA haplogroup is Y-DNA-E. And Y-DNA haplogroup is Y-DNA-E1B1A. All right? So, since you understand this, you also know that anyone that represents the 12 times 2 tribes of Israelites are carrying multi-Y-DNA haplogroups like J, um, R1B, G and T. Also, even a Pacific um, haplo type of E1B1A. But only whites have a few missing screws. All right? Well, at least this is what is being said here. There is no such thing as others' common Y DNA haplogroup among Jews, Israelites, should all have the same haplogroup. And haplogroup, um, haplotype, because they descend from the same individual, paternal ancestry, right? Now, your essential goes to great lift to avoid answering the direct question you pose. 
just look at how Walter Scott, who's apparently so fascinated by ancient history and genetics that he does not even mind reimagining ancient history and also forging genetic data. DNA taken from ancient Canaanites graves shows that they carry haplogroup J and R1B. Now, we want them to uh, check this out. There is only mitochondrial DNA haplogroup L which represents all black women. Just as they try to cast E1B1A as Caucasoid, they also try to cast mitochondrial DNA L3 as more Caucasoid than Negroid in ancestry. But no, 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 only Y DNA E1B1A and haplogroup L, right? These two together shows that you are a direct descendant of this um, Anu and Entu um, gods, Anuna, Anunnakian bloodline down through the Hebrew Israelite bloodline. Right? The true descendants of Jacob, Israel, that is the true descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel should carry only in one and only one unshared Y-DNA haplogroup which will really give the true meaning of having God's chosen people with one unshared Y-DNA um, haplogroup only for them or one side and the G Gentiles who all others share, all right, on the other side, all right? According to scriptures and true histories that are backed up scientifically through DNA, Y-DNA haplogroup E1B1A was found and confirmed to be the only Haplo group, which is not racially um, shared. Hence, they, those who carry it, should obviously be the true Israelites. Right? Remember, we told you that Israel comes from the word Asaru. All right? And the word Asaru means the eye of light. All right? So, this is talking about those who can activate the pineal gland and raise Kotalini to ascend. To God. That's what Israel means. Israel means to ascend to God. So this is a list of African tribes who are descendants of the Hebrew Israelites, nations. Nana Kofi. All right, so let's look at it. April 1st, 2016. The following is a partial, a partial list of the various tribes throughout North, South, East, and West Africa who are descendants of the Hebrew Israelite nation. Now, Understand, this is, once again, um, um, the Bantu, who are the Antu people, all right, the Anuna people, the gods. So you have the Beta Israel, Falashi, Ethiopians, you have the Aban, Yadaya, um, Uganda, you have the Tusis, and Rwanda, you have the Rasapi, um, Zimbabwe, the Limba, South African, you have the uh, Sifwi, um, we also Ghana, the Ashante um, in Ghana, the Iwa in Ghana, um, Bina, um, Ephraim, um, Yoruba, um, Nigeria, all right, which I, I'm also a high priest um, based on this information. Uh, I'm from the tribe of Ephraim as well as also Levi, all right. Um, Lam Lam in Timbuktu, Kasina, Nigeria, Safin Ibram. Um, in Malagasy and Iba or Ibo in Nigeria. All right. So Yahweh will surely punish those fake Israelites um, very soon for taking our land. All right. Yeah. Right now, we're concerned about what's really going on. All right. So here, um, Hebrew Israelite identity lesson five. Ramses III was an Israelite by blood, not an Egyptian. This is why his Y DNA is E M2, which is E1B1A, which, of course, as I've said on several of these last videos, are related to Ramses III. So, any person in Egypt who carries E1B1A was not an Egyptian, but an Israelite. This is where the shepherd kings come in. Okay? And who are the shepherd kings? The shepherd kings. Um, um, with the Hyksos, but here, continue reading on, or Habaru, Hebrew. 
Now, Ramesses II was sterile. He commissioned an Israelite man to donate the sperm that would be responsible for the birth of Ramesses III. Now, I can't verify that, all right? But this is what is said in the article. History bears witness to the fact that there was strong intermingling between Egyptians of Ramesses' reign and the Israelites comprising the majority of population. Now, I have been able to prove that. This fact uh, would um, explain why the haplogroup E gene would no longer be found in Egypt after the Israelites' exodus. Moreover, the E1B1A gene is patrilineal, which means it is passed from father to son. The Bible also records that the seed of a man is passed from a father to his children. And so it is the father's lineage that determines the nation and bloodline of children belongs to, not the mother, all right, or not just the mother. As I showed you, L um, 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 for the mother, all right, is the one in which that is sold for the so-called Moabitess. For this reason, the biblical record always lists lineage from father to son and um, significant women in the record are almost never mentioned without mentioning who their father was. Therefore, if the sub-Saharan Negro shares the same patrilineal DNA as the Pharaoh Ramesses, and both the Negroes that left Egypt and Ramesses III is associated with the Hyksos Israelites, i.e. shepherd kings, then it, clearly, then it becomes clear that the sub-Saharan Negroes are actually the people written in the Bible. The relocation of this patrilineal gene, haplotype E, from Egypt into the sub-Saharan Africa supports the records of the Hebrew Israelites as well as the indigenous traditions of various um, West African Negro or tribal origin. Okay. Um, much of the population that carries E1B1A, um, E-M2, retreated to southern West Africa when the drying of the Sahara. These later people migrated from southeastern Nigeria and Cameroon to Central Africa, East Africa, and um, Southern Africa, causing or following what is called the Bantu expansion. All right? The Bantu expansion. Now, these are the same people in which that was brought here by Abu Bakari II um, when he brought the 20,000 brothers and sisters here almost 200 years before Christopher Columbus. It was also part of the same lineage. The haplogroups most often associated with this expansion is E1B1A, which constitutes up to 48% of the um, African male gene pool. The presence of E1B1A lineage outside Africa can typically be associated with events that occurred after the exp Bantu expansion, such as the trade in the um, African slaves or the Moorish occupation of Iberia. So the E1B1 came through the Moors expansion or occupation of over 800, of 800 years in Iberia, which is Portugal and Spain. It also came into those who 15% of the ancestry, which I went over last week, and which that came from what is called the transatlantic slave trade. But I say that the majority of it came by way of Abu Bakari the second when he went and um, to, uh, to 13, 10, 13, 11, 13, 12, 13, 13, during those um, three Pacific years, four to three years, um, when he sailed 2,200 ships, all right, with 100 people on each one, that's until about 22,000 people arrived here into the Americas before Christopher Columbus. Before Christopher Columbus. All right, this is also where the, um, this, this took place through, this expansion of this E1B1 gene. All right, moreover, it's important to note that the map of Africa showing the frequency of the E1B1 gene in comparison with the Bantu expansion map demonstrates that after the um, expulsion of the Hyksos and the following exodus of the Israelites, the presence of E1B1A almost completely leaves Egypt and appears in Bantu Israelite areas. Although the Bantu Negroes may physically look like the Hermetic ancient Egyptians or the Hermetic cousins, the Kushite Ethiopians, the Negroes possess a different bloodline. All right? So, Bantu people are the descendants of the ancient Israelites. Um, the Bible calls them the children of 
my God disperse people. All right? Amos 9, 7. Are you not as the children of Ethiopia unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? All right? Now for the children of Israel, the Israelites to be likened to the Cushites in the verse above, it obviously means that they were black as them. Not Hamatic, though, but rather descent from, descended from Shem. They are the Bantu people today. All right? So... Most of us have that Bantu expansion of the haplo group, and this is what happens. You're going to find out that as I put on the metaphysical inner religious confusion, my website, the biblical Jacob is actually Pharaoh Yaku Kerr. All right? All right? The biblical David is. Pharaoh Susinis. Susinis. All right? The biblical Moses is Pharaoh that Moses the third. All right? The biblical King Solomon is Pharaoh Siamon. All right? So these biblical characters actually was, as we said, was based on the Tamarian Nasu, Egyptian pharaohs. All right? Um, here we have um, Amenhet, Amenhet, Amenhet the first, um, his Greek, um, the Greek name, Hellenized form is Hamenin, um, um, Mimas, he was the first ruler of the 12th dynastic period. The 12th ruler considered to be the golden age of the Middle Kingdom of, of um, Egypt. He ruled from 1991 B.C. to 1962 B.C. All right? That is your Abraham. <laughs> Once again, that is your Abraham. All right? So we are correcting... Um, the fallacy of some of this information. So here, Abraham is Amenhet. Jacob is Pharaoh um, Yaku Kerr. Um, Moses is Thutmose the third, and King David is um, Susanese. All right. Now, even parts of the story of Thutmose the third, who is Moses, um, some of that information came from the hymns of Anton which came from Pharaoh um, Akhenaten, uh, Unk Unten, who was known as Amenhotep IV later on. And you can see that in Psalms 40 and Psalms 104. Thus David is based on Unk Unten also. And of course, like we said, King David, or excuse me, King Solomon is um, Pharaoh um, Siamon. All right? And this is how it goes, y'all. So uh, we find out that the so-called Negroes of the so-called uh, Hebrew Israelites actually were pharaohs on the ancient Egyptian <laughs> on the ancient Egyptian line. Oh, thanks, God. All right, on the ancient Egyptian line. That's what we find out. All right. So once again, these were the ancient. They called them the ancient Egyptians, but they had the E1B1A genetic line in which that correlates to the fact of who they were on the throne of ancient Kemet, Tamari, Tamari. All right? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, this is the end of the class for today's discussion. Um, any questions concerning anything that we've gone over? We'll get more involved in this. Um, because uh, I don't have any, uh, well, I just enjoy the class. class. Right, appreciate you, brother Al. Yeah, that's Can't hear you, brother John. Get that DNA. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, brother John. Go ahead. Yeah. Or have. Can't hear you. Can we help? 
Yeah, I was just saying that I, when I did the ancestry uh, dot com test, it showed up that I had twenty percent West Band too, along yeah. with yeah, the Congo. So right, that, so that, that means more than likely you're E one B one A. That's who we we'll looking for. Okay, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna try to do mine this week. I'm trying yeah. to find something looking for the yeah, we're looking, or somebody. Yeah, we're looking for the E one B one. That's what we're looking for. Yep. John said he's what now? John said he was um that he's Bantu, twenty percent Bantu, so he's E one B one A. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Bantu tribe. Yeah. That's in Africa. Yeah. All right, Jane. Hey, I was wondering, did, um, have you ever heard of um, um the third and fourth root race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Madame Bavaski's um, information, but, um, you know, uh, we would be the Ethereans, which that she referred to as, which would be the first root race, or the Anunnakians. Um, and even then, that, knows, that doesn't go all the way back to our ancestry, as I showed today, that um, we come out on Sirius, our Sirius connection. So this E1B1A um, helps with our serious connection, helps with our Bantu connection, Anu connection, helps with our Hebrew Israelite connection. All of this ties in um, into the various bloodlines in which that, or in particular this specific bloodline, but this is only this one bloodline of E1B1A, um, which symbolizes the children of, of Jacob or Isaac, uh, Israel the children of Jacob, the children of um, Abraham, so forth and so on. Once again, this is about the Antu people who are the um, children of Antu, who is the mother goddess and a wife of consort of Anu in the Sumerian text. These are the gods, these are the Anunnakians who came here and they made man. So that means that you're part of a people who was not part of the made man bloodline. This is why the Hebrew Israelites, as they would say, was chosen. Because you wasn't part of that. And if you have E1B1A, you're still not part of that. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. All right, brother. All right, I'm saying peace. I gotta watch to each to everyone. All right, so I'm gonna watch to each. Great clap. Peace. Peace.